Just get back under there and put the fucking rails in. <laughs> yeah. And don't drop me guts anymore. It's fucking getting bad. Here's Alfie. No, don't need to press a button. We, we've hired Hive Surf Club with their backwards hats here to... <laughs> Different in my day, I tell you. Oh, we're rolling, are we? Yeah. Right, okay. Hello, everyone. We're uh, back at Clean Classics. <laughs> Imagine you grinning at me, putting me off from down there. You weirdo. <laughs> oh. Dirty bastards. <laughs> So, what's been going on in the workshop since you guys were last here? We're going to give you a bit of a walk around, give you an update on what's happening with the Series 1, a uh, bit of an update on a new project that's just about to start, and Fred and Ollie are going to be going through some stuff on this new system that we're just installing into this car here. Hello everyone, you join us again at Clean Classics, hope you enjoy the video. So back on the Series 1, last time you saw it, I think the rear tub was off and we were replacing the cross members underneath. So now that the cross members are all replaced, we've put the rear tub back on the chassis, we've mounted everything, but in order to get the, the door shuts right we've and get the bulkhead alignment right, we've had to put the rear tub on, line everything up. As you can see, we've started to mock up the transfer box mounts and the rail mounts for the Series 1 now. There's an LT230 sort of Set, it, set in there at the moment. We've also found a few more bits on the Series 1, as you do when you're, when you're doing a resto. So the driver's door, as you can see, I don't know if you can get a shot of that, Raph. The, um, it's, had, it's, had series, it's had Series 2 locks fitted at some stage, and whoever's done it has made a bit of a mess of it, but um, the, the frame of the door is actually, is actually cracked where the, where the lock mounts, so the door doesn't shut properly and it's going to vibrate and it's going to propagate that crack even further so we're going to repair that um, over the weekend probably with the TIG and just get that get that sorted for him and get the lock back in it and get the other door back on. We've also progressed a bit the rails that we had cut up in previous in previous videos we have ended up having to move them up a bit we had a, a bit of a conflict on this um, cross member here but now we've got it all in place and the rails fitting we can now mock up the transfer box position. That's gone in beautifully, that's, that's, that's clearing everything. What we're checking for here is, does it fit underneath the seat box which sits over the top here? And are there any other conflict? Can we get the handbrake linkage through? Things like that. That's in position now. Another important part, which did look like it was gonna be a bit of a challenge here, is the prop angle. It looked like it was very tight, the, the front prop was looking like it was going to conflict with the cross member here. At the moment there's no weight in the vehicle and we just clear it. So once it's loaded up, we, uh, we're looking like we're good. One option we've got is to go to a different type of prop shaft, which would, which is a slightly narrower type. Um, so we could, if we need extra clearance, we've got, got, we've got uh, an, an option there. So in terms of the position, it's, it's really good everywhere else it does clear at the front there it's tight so it's something we'll we'll readdress once the car's fully loaded we'll jack it up we'll do a bit of sort of suspension movement testing but uh, at the moment where we've got it is looking good so we're going to stick with that and, and move on to checking the other bits before getting it all manufactured we've also been continuing with the, the mock-up of all the parts we have designed in CAD trying to root out any any little conflicts and just make sure we're ready to, to send stuff out for manufacture Alfie's been doing a lot of work so I'll uh, hand you over to him to sort of talk you through a couple of the bits he's been up to. So um, this is the underseat battery box. So basically we make a rough like mock-up of everything in our CAD software. And then um, part of what I do is I print everything out, stick it onto cardboard and then cut it all out. Um, and then we can kind of test fit it. So this, this battery box goes in here where the um, old fuel tanks used to be and just sort of bolts up there. So we can test like the width and the height and the length of everything sort of in the CAD and um, get a real world perspective. What's the next stage of it now? It's going off to get cut. Yeah, so um, we kind of, we'll make a couple of models and adjust them to fit in the CAD and then once we're happy with everything, kind of gets approved and then we make part drawings of those and then send them off to be made. This Series 3 is as a previously completed conversion. 
we've got it back in because we're trialing a new system. We've previously talked about how we've done some software updates, but this is the, the sort of next step in our development plan where we're actually the, we're, we're changing out some hardware to control our system in a slightly different way. Previously, we've directly been controlling the motor controller, um, whereas now it's, it's a decision that's going to help speed builds up, lower some costs in terms of how we put it together. Things like it's going to enable us to use the original leaf charger, which we haven't been using before. And this new means of controlling everything is basically controlling everything via cam as opposed to uh, using a hardware switch approach. So yeah, we've, we've done, done the, the, the change over to the new control system now with this car and we're just going through the commissioning process. It's always nice to take a very steady, methodical approach to turning these systems on for the first time. One of the things we're about to do is our, one of our quality control checks where we test all of the voltages across all of the cell tap wires manually. There's every single cell in the battery pack is monitored by an individual wire. So I think there's, there's about 200 wires or just shy of 200 wires coming back to, to our top box here. And what we do is we, by hand, measure each cell tap, write it down in our system, make sure they're, how they're in the right place to start with and making sure all the cells are well balanced in the right place. Like it's, it just, it's, it's the final check before connecting the BMS and, and, and progressing with, with commissioning the high voltage system. Once we're happy with the BMS, we've already tested all the actual wire, wiring loom installs, so we know that the A to B of each wire is, is going to the right place. And so then we can fire it up, make sure we're getting can comms, then we can start going step by step through turning the high voltage system on. What's very important when first turning one of these systems on is making sure you've got your pre-charge and contact to sequence all, all correct. Basically, the motor controller, the motor inverter, has a very large capacitor in. The size and power of the battery means if you just close a switch to that capacitor, it acts like a dead short and will, will throw all of the current that that battery's got straight in to fill that capacitor up. This is where you have a pre-charged relay, which is the first thing you close in the sequence. This acts as sort of a, 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 a steady trickle to allow the current in, in a controlled manner. Then once the system's ready, you can, you can make it live to actually draw power from. If that sequence doesn't happen, it can damage things, so you don't want that to happen wrong. So every build we do, we, we just go through, even though we're very confident it's all correct straight away, we just go through this little commissioning process where we just check it's doing the right sequence before we actually make it go live. So we're in the middle of doing that now. Once that's done, we'll basically be ready to, to try spinning the wheels on this system. It's always an exciting day when we get there. So are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. So I've just been doing some, some bits on the, uh, on the lightweight. The vacuum setup for the, for the brakes wasn't working properly, so, we've, uh, so I've, I've sorted that. So now it's full servo assist. So uh, it stops as well as it goes now. So the red, the red light that flashes is the is a charge indicator. So when it goes into regen off throttle, it, you'll, the red light will will flash. Yeah. That, that's just an indicator that you're that you're charging, that you're getting something something back from the motor in in regen on off throttle. Some of you might have noticed this vehicle kicking about in the back of some of our previous videos. As you can, uh, as you can see, the steering wheel is on the wrong side. So uh, it's an exciting new project that we're just starting to do the fab work on. And uh, stay tuned for more on this one as it, uh, as it happens. So as you can see, as well as the steering wheel being on the wrong side, it's also previously been converted to, uh, to power, power assisted steering. So it's got what I think is a, a P38 power steering box, a uh, Defender column it looks like, and an electronic power steering pump which we'll be integrating into our, into our, into our kit, which shouldn't be a problem. It's, it's a 12 volt pump that will run off the, run off the 12 volt battery. And uh, yeah, it should be, should be a really, really cool project.
in the uh, back in the left hooker. We're um, just checking transfer box location and rail mounting positions. And I've also started to mock up the handbrake setup just to make sure we've got clearance everywhere we need it for, for that. It's, it's, a bit, it's obviously a bit different to the right hand side. Over in the fab department, you saw us make some of the turn parts the other week. Um, so we've uh, we've now welded welded them all together into our. So these are these are motor mounts. That's another motor mount that's mounted to a to a jig at the moment, ready for. And it's and it's just been welded, but it's still quite hot. And uh, and Rob's just welding up one of our one of our front battery boxes. Like and subscribe, and drop us a comment if there's more you'd like to see from the workshop.